Ignatz and Sigmund Steinhardt came from Bavaria to California during the gold rush. They did very well, and as a result of that, they wanted to spread their generosity, and in particular, they wanted San Francisco to have the world's greatest aquarium. An agreement was made with the city of San Francisco, and the California Academy of Sciences would be the location. So we opened our doors on September 29th, 1923, uh, here in Golden Gate Park. One of the things that was of note at the Steinhardt Aquarium back in the day was that we had a very diverse collection and we didn't focus on any one particular geographic region. We're not a regional aquarium and that continues to this day. And we have a collection that's very diverse and that draws on habitats and environments from all around the world. The original Steinhardt Aquarium was a Victorian era aquarium the grand dam of aquariums, you know, very ornate, a lot of details with different molding and relief and ornamental tiles and things like that. And that existed up through the 1950s. More than 20,000 kinds of fishes. Earl Harold was the director of Steinhardt Aquarium during the 1950s and 60s. He was apparently very demanding, very charismatic, and he's perhaps best known for the Science in Action film series, which was one of the first, if not the first, science programming that was done on live television. There's a lot of great stories there when they it's live animals on live television things often can go awry and you know people were bitten by large snakes and things sort of went out of hand at times. These things are pretty hard to hold on to. In 1973 I received a cable from San Francisco. I was in New Guinea at the time and the cable said Earl Harold Aquarium director drowned, interested in job interview. I was absolutely flabbergasted. So I came to San Francisco and interviewed for the job, and they gave it to me. During the John McCosker era of the Steinhardt Aquarium, we were the first public aquarium to successfully display and release a great white shark. Sandy, living in the fish roundabout, then successfully released back out into the Pacific Ocean. Butterball was an Amazonian manatee that had been harpooned and was for sale in a fish market in the Amazon. One of our trustees bought Butterball because he was still alive, brought him back to San Francisco, took him to the hospital, they sewed him up, they cured him of several diseases, put him on display, and for the next 14 years he was there eating 20 heads of lettuce every day. I ran the Steinhardt Aquarium for 25 years. Then I felt that it was time for someone else to take it over. In 2003, early 2004, we shut our doors here in Golden Gate Park, and moved a great many animals downtown by truck and bus and train to a temporary museum on Howard Street where we existed for four years while they reconstructed the new Academy of Sciences and moving back just five years ago into this fantastic new building. We were the first aquarium to display flashlight fishes. The flashlight fish are amongst my real favorites because they were discovered during an academy expedition in the Indian Ocean. And these are fishes that have bioluminescent light organs beneath their eyes and it gives us a chance to think what it's like in the bottom of the ocean in the dark. Aquariums are still popular and they're still very, very important. A family that comes to the Steinhardt Aquarium is really exposed to a variety of types of animals in different habitats of the ocean. So they may be very familiar with coral reefs if they have been snorkeling on a family vacation, but maybe don't know so much about their own backyard and what's right off our coast. And so we're able to show them what we have here in addition to what is happening in other areas of the world and know that it's all one ocean we give people a glimpse that they may never get into what it lives and what swims in the sea. And you come in and you look through these big picture windows of all these species and you see them swimming around and interacting and exhibiting natural behaviors and feeding. And it's really captivating. It's a way to engage people in an emotional way. We're able to really inspire people to learn more and care more and effect do more for those habitats in the wild.